Alrighty, folks. Okay, okay. Welcome in, everybody. My name is Voodoo Val, and I am going to be your host yet again for the Photoshop Daily Crea Creative Challenge. I'm super pumped. It is the start of a new day. It is the start of a new week. It is the start of a new moment where I insinuate Adam Driver into situations he does not belong in. Um, welcome everyone. I, I've got my coffee, I've got my Photoshop, I've got everything ready to go, and I am pumped uh, to dive into challenge number five. How are you folks doing this morning, hmm? I am doing well, thank you for asking, Annika. By the way, save your work. <laughs> Frank, it's good to see you. Odari, Daniel, uh, Chris, Andreas, Umicorn, Wade, Tanya. <laughs> it's good to see you. Sean, RB, Steve. Um, welcome in, everyone. If you are wondering who I am greeting this morning, it's probably because you are over on the YouTube channel and you can't see all of our wonderful friends and Adobe family in the chat. So please come over to behance.net slash live. That is where the party is happening. That is where the memes are at. That's where the meme lords reside. And that is where everyone is hanging out. Um, so Tim Loomis, good to see you. Um, also, I wanted to welcome uh, Kai. Um, if I am... Let's see, if I'm not mistaken, I think I saw someone named Kai in the chat who said they did not know that this uh, community existed. So welcome in Kai, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you are now a member of the Adobe Live fam. Um, and I hope you enjoy yourself here. I hope you make some friends. I hope you learn some things and kind of boost your creative workflow. Have a good time. Um, so without further ado, I am going to jump over to the landing page. Uh, because this is how you can get started with me. Um, this is where you will probably want to pay attention pretty closely, Kai. If you are unfamiliar with all of this stuff, this is how you can get started. Um, so you will um, join this page by going to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. You'll know you're in the right place if it says January 3rd through January 28th. If you are in the future and you are watching the replay of this video and you come to this page and it doesn't say this date, that is because there's probably a new challenge going on and if you'd like to find the challenge that I'm talking about in this video all you have to do is scroll down to the bottom here because all of our streams are archived by date um, you can flip through them and get all of the challenge files and all that good stuff if you just search for the proper time frame um, at the beginning of every day, we unlock a challenge for you and you can come in here, you can click on the watch video button if you want to go back to the, the replay um, or watch the live stream if the live stream is in progress. And you can also hit this get started button because I have created some wonderful starter files for you folks to get started with me so you don't have to start with a, uh, a blank page. The, um, the dreaded blank page um, can sometimes be daunting. So I've got a little, got a little boost for you this morning. Um, we are gonna dive into Photoshop and I am going to sort of go over what we've got planned and where you can find assets if you want to do your project exactly like I'm doing mine. So once you hit that get started button on the distressed and vintage challenge we are doing today, um, you will get a file that looks like this. This is distress an image, giving it a 90s vibe using noise and other free textures from Adobe Stock. Um, so we've got that little spiel and then we've also got this little timestamp graphic that I have created for you custom. Um, and what we're going to be diving into is we're going to take an image today. We're going to make it look distressed and old. We're going to give it like a grungy border and make it look like maybe a Polaroid image, um, which I'm pretty pumped about. And if you would like to get your hands on the same exact textures that I am going to be using, all you have to do is come over here. Um, let me dive over here. Go to the free section of Adobe Stock. It is a beautiful, wonderful, magical unicorn of a tool um, where you can find excellent, high quality, high res assets that you can license and use in your projects. Um, and what I did was I simply typed in light leak. Um, for those of you who don't know what light leak means, they are these strange, almost bokeh effect um, images where the light kind of leaks through uh, the image. And I, I grabbed a couple of these. So these are some of the ones that I may be working with today if you'd like to snag them. Um, and I also looked up film frame because there's these really cool textures. You can scroll through here and see um, like scratchy textures we could use, um, little borders we can use. You could even download yourself some of 
of these cool templates and things if you want to put your image in this cool retro uh, TV, if you want to put it in an actual Polaroid or in an actual film frame, whatever you want to do, you can make this your own. You don't have to do it exactly like I do mine. Um, and then we are also going to be using a font from Adobe Fonts called Chantal. I think that's how you say it. Um, if that's not how you say it, I'm making it fancy. Chantal is the uh, is is the font that we're going to be using. All you have to do is come to Adobe Fonts, go ahead and search Chantal, and you can activate the fonts. Um, and that should automatically, instantly, just add it to your Photoshop. Even if you already have Photoshop open, if as long as it's up to date, um, the moment you hit that uh, all fonts active button there, it will throw it into um, Photoshop for you and you'll have it. So um, we're gonna dive back into Photoshop. I have already made myself a little folder with all of these things. Um, it's not included in the starter file because we want to make sure that when we're using assets like these images from Adobe Stock that we give credit where credit is due. So I can't make them downloadable for you, um, but you can go to um, Adobe Stock and snag them for yourself. Um, and the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hide this info here. Um, and I'm going to, let's also hide this tam, uh, timestamp. Um, I'm gonna start working with our image. Oh, which reminds me, um, I am also using an image here. I just typed in 90s portrait. Um, you can search for any image that you like, but I thought this one was pretty darn cool. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and cut him out of here and make him look like the image is not as high res as it is. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go over here and select my object selection tool. You can select that tool for yourself by hitting W on your keyboard. Um, if you hit W on your keyboard and it brings you to quick selection tool or magic wand tool, it's probably because object selection tool is not set as the main tool for the key W. And all you have to do is just right click on uh, whichever tool is selected. It'll open up this little tray and you can select object selection tool. Um, with our image here selected in our layers panel, if I hover over here, as you can see, the new and improved updated object selection tool will kind of highlight, it'll be like, mm, is this a thing? Photoshop helps you out. Photoshop is your best friend. Photoshop wants to know, is this the uh, droid you were looking for? And it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap that. And it gives me this wonderful selection around him. Now we are gonna have to come in and clean it up a little bit, but we're gonna dive into a little bit about how you can edit masks for those of you who maybe are a little unfamiliar. And we're gonna clean this up real nice. So I've got this selected. And the first thing I'm going to do is down here at the very bottom, there is a little rectangle with a dot in it. That is your mask button. If you have something selected and you hit the mask button like so, it will mask everything except what is within the selection. It'll just mask it away for you. So we have masked this and it's actually pretty darn clean. The only thing that I'm really worried about is we've got a little bit of the yellow background here. Uh, and all I'm going to do is select my mask. You'll notice there's two little icons on my masked layer now. We have the image and then we have the actual mask. And I'm gonna show you how to edit that. So we have black and white. We have the white region, which is what is selected, the content um, of this mask. And then we have the black, which represents everything that you can no longer see. Um, so if I wanted to mask out this little yellow portion, I'm gonna grab my brush by hitting B on the keyboard. If I wanted to mask out that little yellow portion right there, all I would have to do is make that black on the mask, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do, normally I, you know, I work with a stylist, so I could come in here um, with my brush and I could, you know, start to paint this in. Let me make sure I've got black selected. I could come in and just start to, to paint this out, but not everybody has a stylus. So I'm gonna show you a precise way that you can really get in here and, um, and change this up. Uh, if you hit L on your keyboard, it will open your lasso tool, or you can come up here and right click. Um, and you can use the lasso tool, uh, which is just kind of allows you to do like a free form selection. You could use the polygonal lasso tool and you can see here it's it's got hard edges, but I could come in here and just tap, tap, tap um, and make myself a very nice clean selection around this portion and then come in with the paint bucket or the brush and go ahead and 
um, dab that in there like so. Um, or what we could do is we could use the magnetic lasso tool, which is really neat. So if I, I'm going to do this with a mouse here so that you folks can see. If I use the magnetic lasso tool, it will actually, you see how it places those points? And, and depending on what you're selecting, you folks might be using a different image than me. Um, it will sort of auto glom on to the edges um, for you, which is kind of nice. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and use the polygonal lasso tool because it is um, an easy way to do things. It gets the job done um, fairly clean, especially for this region that I am masking here. It works for me and that is what I am going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get my selection, grab a paint bucket tool um, and kind of paint bucket that in and I'll hit control D to deselect or command D if you were working on a Mac. Um, so now I have this selected. There's some stuff that I could do maybe around the edges to clean this up, but I'm not going to waste too much time today. We're just going to kind of jump in to it and you can clean your image up if that works for you. Chat is popping today. Welcome in guys. It's good to see you. I've heard this background music like 55 times while watching streams. We have a playlist um, of music that we are able to use for our streams. This is um, Chill Hop Radio and or Chill Hop Studios and Andrew Applepie um, because we can't use copyrighted music. Um, so we have a bunch of um, music that is prepared for us that we can use. Um, if I had my way, I'd be listening to the Star Wars score, um, but can't always get what you want. I think they wrote a song about it. <laughs> um, Autoglom is a technical term from Adobe. It is. Um, okay, so we've got our selection here um, and just so you know, we're, we're clear and I can make sure everybody understands how these masks work. If we wanted to do a quick little uh, experiment, if I grab white and I just start painting, you can see, remember, white reveals and black conceals, okay? So um, that is, that's how I remember it. Um, so it also um, kind of it, it keeps everything exactly as is on the original image. Um, so you're not actually erasing things. No more erasing, no more destroying your layer. This is a very non-destructive way to work. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and control T or command T if you are on a Mac. Um, and I'm just going to kind of blow him up um, and put him in the center of my page here. And then we're going to distress this guy, which sounds not very nice, but He'll be okay. Um, the Autoglom tool to be released 2022. Um, yes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a custom noise texture. This is something that I love to do, love, love, love to do because it is a very easy, quick way to kind of create my own custom texture so I don't have to go elsewhere to find one um, if a simple texture is going to work. So I'm gonna say Control Shift N or Command Shift N if you're on a Mac, just to make myself a new layer. I'm gonna paint bucket some gray in here and I'm gonna come up to Filter, Noise, and Add Noise. And this just allows me to make this nice textury noise um, kind of texture. And I can turn up the amount, I can turn it down, I can do whatever I think is best for my project. We can make it uniform, we can make it Gaussian, um, and we can also turn off the monochromatic if that is what we want. I might turn monochromatic off, I'm gonna say okay. Um, and what I'm gonna do is right click that and create clipping mask just to add this kind of texture to him. Um, and I'm gonna turn this on to a blending mode. Now you can kind of cycle through here. I have a pretty good idea of which ones are going to work best um, for this, but I'm just gonna kind of cycle through and, and look. Soft light is our best bet, but you can kind of come in here and hover over and preview all of these blending modes because depending on your image, if you're not using the same image as me, um, something else might work a little bit better. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and go with soft light um, just to give him give him some grain. We're making it look a little little older, um, see? Um, which also already looks pretty darn good. Um, and then with our assets that we have taken from Adobe Stock, we are going to start using more blending modes to kind of make this look distressed and old. We're gonna give it um, uh, not a background per se, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna fake a background, okay? Uh, because we don't really need too much detail. You could find an image of a location and um, color match and throw a location back there. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some of our light leaks to give a variation 
of hue and value to that pink background, okay? Um, and you can change the color. It doesn't You don't have to keep it pink. Honestly, I chose pink because he's got some interesting colors going on this jacket, and I figured, what the heck. Uh, but if you don't like it, you can change it because you are the master of this realm today, and what you say goes. So I'm going to grab our little blurry light here, and I am going to transform it, okay? Um, and what I did here, if you'll notice, uh, by default, it's going to hold this aspect ratio as I start to transform. Um, but what I can do is I can hold shift, control, and alt to transform it in different ways. So if I hold alt when I resize, um, it's actually going to resize from the center instead of just dragging from whatever corner I'm pulling from, which is very useful. Um, if I hold control, I can transpose these points individually as I see fit. Um, you can even kind of give it like a, a strange skew if you want, um, not really what I'm going for. Um, but I could also, um, if I hold if I hold shift, it just breaks that aspect ratio so I can go like that. But if I hold shift and alt at the same time, I can drag this out um, and it will mirror. So I'm not dragging from the corner, I'm dragging from the side. It's holding that aspect because I'm holding um, shift and it's mirroring how I transform it because I'm holding alt. So that's a, a cool way that you can um, utilize the transform tools. Gonna go ahead and hit enter. Um, and then we're going to preview this on some blending modes. Um, and I'm thinking I'm probably gonna go for something like screen, honestly. Um, and I don't know if I want that border around in the back. I could, you know, transform again um, and kind of bump that out just to give it a little bit of variation. I just don't want it to be one solid color in the back, um, but you can do whatever you like. Um, wondering how people back in the day retouch or manipulate their photos before computer even exists. Um, they would edit the actual film reels. Um, in fact, uh, fun fact, I'm sure no one is gonna be surprised this is a fact about Star Wars. Um, back in the day, there were actually scenes from the original Star Wars movie where some of the scenes where there are blaster shots and um, and and the, the spaceships are shooting where somebody had to go in and like paint, like physically paint some of those blaster bolts and things because technology was different. Um, so uh, now that we have this, we are going to use some of our gritty textures, which I'm just gonna select all of these because I know this is all gonna be on top. I'm gonna drag them up and we're gonna experiment. Um, so I know I want kind of a distressed, interesting frame around here. So let's take this one, let's go ahead and transform this and I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift yet again and I'm going to drag this up like that um, so that we have kind of a square ratio here and I'm gonna invert this because I want it to be dark around the edges and I'm gonna need it inverted if the blending modes I would like to use are going to interact with this image properly so I'm going to just control I control I is an auto invert um, it's very useful to know that if you have to invert something you know um, uh, it, it, it's a very useful shortcut to know. Um, maybe we can get a link to the Photoshop shortcuts as well um, in the chat because that might help some of you folks kind of cut down on some time in your workflow and learn the shortcuts for your favorite tools. Um, so we've got our inverted image here and we are gonna go ahead and throw this on Darken. Um, I really like Darken a lot. I think it interacts with these colors very well. And as you can see, just that tiny, teeny, small amount of uh, of detail, just the one image on the one blending mode has already made this look very distressed, very old. Um, and as you can see, as we start to add texture and things, the background, while it's just a paint bucket layer of pink and a light leak overlaid, um, on that soft light blending mode, it's it's starting to not really matter that there's nothing back there because this guy is the focus um, and you actually don't, I think, sometimes don't have to go through all the trouble to do all the work to put all that stuff in the back. This looks cool. Um, if I wanted to, I could take a concrete um, kind of texture, which we have, 
Um, let me grab, I have a, a, a concrete kind of texture and you can find this on Adobe Stock for free if you just type in concrete texture, whatever it is that you um, want to put back there. And I can free transform this. Um, also, if you go to free transform while you're doing all this and for some reason it's, it's not working, for some reason your shortcuts aren't responding, make sure that you are not selected, especially if you are um, working on a PC. Make sure that you are not selected here, this little uh, drop down menu is not blue because that means you are still selected on your blending modes. You want to just hit enter or escape and it will unselect it and then you can use your shortcuts again. Um, holding alt and shift I'm going to resize this yet again um, and then we can throw this on a blending mode as well and we can start to add a little bit of grit texture to the back um, if we want. Let's see, honestly soft light kind of looks cool again. Um, I don't know that I'm going to add all of this detail in the back, but just to give you an idea, something you could do, you could get a brick texture, put a brick texture back there and make it look like there's, you know, a, a brick wall if you want. You can do whatever you want. Um, and then we're going to grab a light leak. Let's grab one of our light leaks here. Um, I love using light leaks and it doesn't seem really that interesting, right? It doesn't really seem that great. It's like, this is like a, a black image with some rainbow light splashes on it. Um, why is this important? Why is this interesting? Why is this necessary? Because when you throw this one on a blending mode, it starts to really look like you took, look at that around the edges, it starts to really look like film. It starts to really look like somebody took this image and um, the lighting was glaring. I'm imagining this guy maybe walking down the street in 90s downtown Los Angeles, just kind of, you know, with his buddy's got a, a Polaroid camera and he's just snapping shots and he's looking cool. Um, and it just, it just gives that vibe. You know, um, I'm gonna leave that on Lighten. I, I like this pretty well. Um, and I don't know if we'll use anything else. We could, we could, you know, add some more distressing there. We could come in and add this like sort of gritty vignette if we want. But honestly, I think that this looks pretty darn cool. I think this serves our purpose. And the last thing that I want to do, just to add a touch of realism to this, to make it look like it was a photo that was taken, is I'm going to come over here to this timestamp image that I created for you. Um, and I'm going to put that on top here. And I'm gonna transform this and I'm going to make it tiny, make it teeny tiny. And I'm gonna throw this in the bottom corner over here. We're gonna zoom in, we're gonna make this look cool, okay? So we're gonna throw this down here, um, make it look like this was taken with some kind of um, technology that gives us that classic retro vintage timestamp. Um, and I am going to throw a, uh, a um, color overlay on this. So I just double clicked my layer there to open the layer styles. We're gonna come over to color overlay and I'm going to select like an orange color. If anybody, I don't know if there's any 90s kids or 80s kids um, in here, but typically if you took a photo back in the day, um, it would give you a date so you know when it was taken. Um, and it was like an orange blurry kind of, you know, uh, stamp in the corner of the, of the photo. So we've got this here and I'm gonna go ahead and select that, right click that. Um, and go convert to smart object because I'm gonna want to alter this. And if you alter this while it has the color overlay on it, you can apply as many effects to this as you want, but so long as that color overlay is applied and it has not been rasterized or turned into a smart object, some of the effects that you add to it after the fact may not show. So that's why I turn it into a, um, into a smart object. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to come up to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And I'm keeping an eye on time here because I don't want to get cut off. Um, we're just going to make this blurry. I might duplicate this with control or command J a few times just to kind of give it that look. Um, we will, let's see, group that, right click it, convert to smart object. And I can come in and I can actually throw that on a, ooh, there we go, that's kind of cool. Throw that on a um, a blending mode if I want. And we can alter the opacity maybe, kind of change the opacity. 
Um, and then you could come in with another light leak and throw another light leak over the top of that if you wanted. It is up to you. Um, we did not really get into using our text, but if you wanted to use the Chantel um, font to write something on here like Dylan 1992 LA, something like that, you know, and, and turn it to the side and like somebody wrote on it with a marker, that would be cool too. Um, but that is all the time I have for you today. I do not want to get cut off, so I will have to bid you adieu, bid you farewell. Um, I I'm so glad that you folks were here with me today. I had a blast. I will see you later today with the debut of a new game show, folks. Um, so I hope that you will stick around for the rest of the content today, and I will talk to y'all later. Adios, folks. I am so glad that